Good afternoon, everybody. Dave Walker here with the Beta SMB Institute, and I am very excited to be joined by a, just a tremendous supporter of the Institute and, the, and our Beta SMB community, and that's Eric Spadafora, who's the Vice President of Sales for Verizon Business. Welcome, Eric. Great. Thanks, Dave. Thanks for having me. Um, you know, I asked you because I, I have been observing and hearing from so many different um, members of our community that there's, there's a transformation going on in small businesses, um, acceptance and adoption and enthusiasm for new technology, which is not exactly things that you would ascribe yeah. to small business before the, sure. the pandemic really took place. And so I, I, I couldn't think of anybody better to talk about what is happening, because I figure with so many connection points uh, that you guys have uh, for the, the, the for small business technology, that you would able be able to really kind of talk us through that and what's really what you guys are seeing um, as, as you look out over your landscape of several yeah. million small business customers. But yeah. you know, it, it 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 might be helpful because not everybody knows who you are. Just give us some quick background on you and your team. Sure. So um, I run all small business sales and service and engineering for the Eastern United States for Verizon. Um, we've got about 1,500 uh, talented sales professionals who work in my organization. We handle every account, every customer who is non-government, non-enterprise. So that means from uh, someone who's got you know, two people and uh, a prosumer working on the home to someone who's 2,000 uh, and everything in between. We sell a fully integrated suite of solutions from wireless to wireline. Uh, we have uh, your traditional core business of cell phones, of course, uh, tablets and other uh, assets like that that you use each and every day, uh, up to cloud-based um, asset tracking, fleet monitoring, unified communications, cloud-based security, uh, and the list goes on on video collaboration. You're on Blue Jeans right now. It's a Verizon product. We're super proud to have integrated that platform this year. Um, and so those are the assets we've assembled to help customers and small business customers specifically um, streamline their processes because I just named seven or eight different categories, um, but there's one mm -hmm. company that owns all those assets end to end and that's ours. So we, we believe we can bring a lot of uh, simplicity and efficiency to the conversation for small businesses. Well, you know, I know that I know the briefcase is big. I know the portfolio yeah, of products and services is big, but let's let's kind of take the big ones in turn and tell us, tell me, and tell our audience um, what you're seeing. Um, and this really is, I think, in a, in an evolving view, right? I mean, there's there's the right. first couple of months of the pandemic, and then there's now, and maybe the trajectory of what between those two things is. So if you if you can kind of put it in that kind of Trajectory context. Yeah. Um, let's start with the big one, 5G. What, how, what's going on with 5G in small business? So look, this is this is the week uh, for major announcements. Uh, 5G nationwide with Verizon. You'll see the advertising. It says 5G just got real. Um, mm -hmm. As we build things, a history of networking, and we build networks to last, and we take a longer view of it. We build it right. Uh, we build it for scale. And frankly, we build it for uh, the long term. That's who we are. That's in our, our DNA as a business. Um, so we launched this week for nationwide 5G. Uh, that is different than 5G ultra wideband. 5G ultra wideband is the what's oh, called a millimeter wave, so a, a different spectrum uh, altogether. And you can expect to have better performance on the 5G nationwide. That'll cover 200 million people, 1,800 uh, cities and towns across the U.S. Today, it's active. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, right now in production, but it's ultra wideband and the combination of those two assets um, coupled with the 4G LTE network that stays in place that I think is pretty unique in the marketplace. As a matter of fact, I know it is because ultra wideband uh, is now getting up to four gigabits a second. And to put that in perspective, that's like multiple fiber links uh, at one time through the air. It's the fastest, not one of, not almost, it's the fastest 5G network on the planet globally. Uh, and mm -hmm. we continue to build out to that, you know, to that standard in our metro cores. So if you're in a, a downtown environment, we're in 50 cities today, we'll be in 60 by the end of the year. Uh, but if you're not in a downtown a metro core environment, you're in the, the suburbs or in the, the rural areas, 5G nationwide or as a fallback, the 4G network, which also covers 300 million uh, people in the United States, 
uh, we've got this kind of layered approach and it's really unique in the marketplace. So we announced it this week. It was, a, I don't know if you, Dave, if you saw this, but it was a once, probably in a lifetime thing. We had Tim Cook and his iPhone and Hans and the network and it, it came together for the iPhone 12 and with ultra wideband capabilities on Verizon. I mean, it's, it's a big week for us. We've been working <laughs> around the clock. Uh, I bet you have. It's so been, I appreciate you making the time. So yeah. it, in the, it, it, it give us some illustrations and some examples of what 5G can do. I mean, I think that and the reason I ask is because I think there's not enough of, enough of an appreciation that 5G isn't just about speed and bandwidth. It allows you to do X, fill in the blank. What are the things, some of the things that 5G now allows you to do as a small business? Yeah, I think a couple of um, right now use cases. Okay, 5G has lower latency, better throughput, and we'll connect to our multi-axis edge compute. That's the cloud compute that we are putting at the edge. We partner with Amazon and others uh, to make those services available. So it's really democratizing technology, okay? It's taking mm -hmm. down the hurdles and the constraints of utilization, of access, of adoption, because it's becoming ubiquitous. So it's a, it's a next generation kind of step function leap in technology that will allow you in certain areas to go completely wireless, end to end. Stateless environments, Dave. Access to the cloud, always on, always secure. It's inherent in the technology itself. That's fundamentally different than the way you would have built networks or solutions in the past. And it's also allowing the rate of innovation, the rate of change, the rate of data uh, ingestion into AI and ML, uh, and also spinning out of those models at a much higher clip. So it's kicking off the next wave of I would say technology evolution in particular verticals, but it's available as simple as better, faster, cheaper, uh, up mm -hmm. to transformational uh, with AI ML in certain verticals like healthcare, uh, for example. Um, it's, that's one that is really gonna be impacted. Or something as simple as trucking and, and commerce on uh, transportation, uh, managing every asset because the chip costs are less, the bandwidth costs are less, so we're getting it out there uh, in, a, in a more ubiquitous way. And do you think it, it, it provides the opportunity to just off the top of my head, creating much richer customer service experiences and interactions between? Yeah, I think, I think when customers? you first, we, I like to draw upon the history, right? So you remember, um, uh, walk into a business, our, our network's down, our computer, it started off with our computers are down, right? <laughs> our, our computers aren't working, right? And then there's no the credit card. didn't terminals. load. <laughs> right, yeah. Like that, there it was, uh, well, I can't process your payment because uh, the ter terminal's down. And then it was the network's down. Well, but today, nothing can go down. That's not how businesses operate. That customer will go online immediately, uh, period. And you will mm -hmm. lose that sale. So it is no longer um, optional. It is no longer a nice to have, always on access to your, your, your clouds, be it, you know, something as simple. People say, well, I'm not in the cloud. If you have email, it's a high probability it's in the cloud, right? You know, all right. of those features and functions are, are out there. Um, so yeah, it will allow for richer customer experiences, but it'll also allow for more consistent customer experiences, more consistent right. access, more consistent output and throughput uh, for every single customer and for every single business. And that used to be resident only in your enterprise customers, your, your global companies who can afford the capabilities that having this access always on would, um, would allow. I'll give you a, a real quick example. On the Verizon network on 5G uh, and from your office, you can access a new product called the Contact Center Hub. And what it is, it's a complement to our cloud-based unified communication services we call OneTalk. It's on top of that, but it's in the network. And here's what's revolutionary. It's priced per user, per month. It's cloud-based contact center. Now the same functionality that you would offer uh, to the biggest banks in the world, right? To the biggest airlines, the same call tree flow menu, I can offer to a small business today for one very low price uh, and they can act. Now you have to have access to always on clean, secure bandwidth. That's where we come out of the base layer. When you start to build these things, you can increase your presence uh, uh, across the entire United States and have professional contact center, uh, both um, you know, digitally and audibly through uh, IVRs and call trees to any business. So you can take your florist down the right. street and it can look like 1-800-Flowers. It can have the same technology. That's what, that's what I call democratization of technology that 5G will enable. Without it, you have a slow DSL link, an old modem. It's not going to work. It's not going to fly. And, right? 
and probably the coolest part is it's on your hip, right? I mean, it's it's right there in your hand. Um, right, you could you, so, you could change your office. Can, we could roll it over your smartphone if you wanted to. Yeah, I, you know, I, again, I think there there isn't yet. This is just one guy's opinion, but I don't think there's an appreciation yet of the potential impact that 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 it has on a lot of the enterprises that are part of our institute and how they really interact with small business customers. I'm not sure they realize that the impact it's and the opportunities it's going to create for those small business customers yeah. and the services and products that can flow in behind it to support certain things. So I think it's really exciting. And I just continuously want to make sure that that um, our community especially knows, okay, this yeah. is the transformative technology. It's probably the, the biggest, I would say, transformative yeah, from, technology so, that's out a, there. Because yeah, from a, I like to think of network access as a fabric, um, uh, wireless. It's, it's everything's connected always, right? And whether, right. you know, I'm on a fiber connection right now, uh, if that goes down, I'm on a wireless connection, I leave my house, everything's connected. And that's not going to stop. What is different this time, and, and I'll, you know, I think we, we all would admit and agree to this, the pandemic has been absolutely terrible uh, for, for everyone, um, both in our society, in our business, in our lives, et cetera. I mean, it's just been a really, a really difficult time. Typically, when you and I talk, there's, there's genuine excitement from both of us because we're unlocking technology to serve the small business, which is the engine mm -hmm. and backbone of the American economy. We understand that. This is born out of necessity, though. What we're talking about here, this, what I'll say, is a shift to digital by our mm -hmm. small business um, uh, customers and cohort is born out of necessity, but it will be a good thing on a go-forward basis because SMBs, if you are, uh, you're making your number, you're growing your business, and things are good, you just continue to do the way you used to. You used to have carbon copies or you know, just write things down on your desk. Well, what if you're not at your desk? What if you have no one to process carbon? What if you don't want to touch the paper? Like these are things that are very real and contemporary right now. So shift to digital, uh, investing in tech and making sure that they understand once you have those, I'll call them foundational components, then you can build and customize and iterate uh, along the way as the environment with COVID, which we're living with and hopefully beyond uh, when we're mm -hmm. not living with it, hopefully, uh, mm -hmm. and is, is there for people. That's what I see. Uh, and I think that's what's really going to help bring small businesses that make it through this tough time back, but also enable the next wave of entrepreneurs to quickly, you know, uh, remove the capex. What if there was no capital expenditure barrier to to ramping right. up your business asset of your assets and inventory and stuff like that? I think that's what gets me the most excited and most optimistic uh, for this uh, for small businesses in America. That that's terrific. Now, hand hand in glove with the with the transformation. Um, of the technology and the, trans the, the digital transformation going on, of course comes security. Of right. course comes the issue of security. So talk to me about how you guys are taking those two things kind of in lockstep, the expansion right. of the capabilities with the expansion of security. So the way we used to think about networking, and I grew up on the wireline side, global networks and very secure, hardened boxes mm -hmm. and wires, right? That's the way things were done. We all went to an office, right? Uh, what mm -hmm. happens if nobody goes to the office? Right. Are you secure? Right. If 10 people worked in one office and then they all went home, you now have 10 endpoints on your wide area network. Uh, right. None of them are incredibly secure. So the adoption of cloud-based technology through what we'll call software-defined networks, uh, which is you bring the best access you can uh, get in your, in your area, we'll secure it in our network, we'll inter, uh, route uh, those through a meshed uh, fabric. Uh, and guarantee mm -hmm. it's secured. And then you can drive applications like we have today on BlueJeans over it. So it's it's in, inherently making your endpoints secure. And there's this notion we've been promoting and it's real. It's it's not just working from here, Dave, it's, it's giving your customers, in our case, our customers, our small businesses, the ability to work from anywhere and still have the same right, outcome. Right. I can't tell you how many customers I speak to, uh, to talk, talk to one today, uh, from when he was in a cafe in, in Grand Rapids, just wanted to get out of his house, a little change of pace. It's not in the mm -hmm. office. We're having real business conversations anywhere because your technology is portable, because it's cloud-based, because it's always on, and because, frankly, we're talking in high definition right now. And so, right. uh, you know, the quality, I think, is, is orders of magnitude better than where it was just a few years ago. So um, you, you kind of touched on it, the, the uh, 
remote work has obviously become huge. Um, and not just remote work, but remote interface with uh, customers, um, particularly in B2B setting. So what are you guys seeing as far as that and the transformation behind that coming? So I've been really pleased at um, the receptivity of customers to meet us uh, virtually. Okay, I, yeah. I am no different than you. Uh, I am an outside sales leader. My team has been uh, geared and developed and architected to be outside with customers solving business solutions. Uh, mm -hmm. This is problems by applying our solutions. But uh, we've had to retool our entire team to be mm -hmm. vir virtual meeting excellence and to do mm -hmm. things differently and have the flexibility uh, to you know, solve those same problems uh, over, over the phone. Uh, I would love to be back in front of our, uh, mm -hmm. our, our clients and they would like to have us in there, but if it's not safe to do so, we're just, we're just not gonna do it. Now in the retail environment where this particular customer I, was, I referenced earlier, um, they're starting to see, as are we, um, foot traffic start to emerge, right? The dial's twisting back up, the, mm -hmm. the thermostat's going from ice cold to we're thawing, right? We're not out of the woods, it's not on 72, but we're getting better uh, in, in a whole host of areas across the east where I, where I cover my, my territory. Mm -hmm. So um, business customers are optimistic. I think that's a thread. Uh, many are realistic uh, and some, mm -hmm. I hate to say it, um, if you don't change now, you're, you're probably going to run into really, really head, uh, strong headwinds. And that's a nice way of saying you're, you're going to have some real challenges because how people shop is different. Consumer mm -hmm. expectations are changing. But if you're a small business and you have this um, understanding and of what's going on around you and the tools available to you, I think that's important. Mm -hmm. that weren't there pre-COVID. It's your design, you, you choose which way you wanna go, but there's absolutely the resources, technology, and a lot of cases funding uh, to make sure that um, you're addressing your customers' needs and driving the revenue you need to stay solid. We have the strategic planning team from Accenture presenting some research that they recently did and they kind of created a new segmentation scheme for small businesses um, and a very thoughtful one. And it really divided small businesses into three buckets. There were the the, those who were going to thrive, those who were just excelling, um, which was about actually about 25% of the total small business who were, for whatever the reason, um, they were doing a lot better in the last six months than they had done right. before. Um, and then there was a, a, a smaller sliver, slightly smaller sliver, sliver of um, survivors, those who were hanging on, but they weren't necessarily doing a whole lot better. But the vast majority kind of lived in the third bucket, which was which they called stragglers. What was interesting was is that all three groups recognized that they had to increase their investment in technology and digital to, to do better. And whether that was moving from being a straggler to a survivor or a survivor to a thriver or a thriver just even, you know, chewing up more business, right. they all recognized that they needed to make that investment. And I think that's heartening in a way that they, they know what they need to do um, to ride that transformation. So how has Blue Jeans been for you? I mean, I know that's kind of a component offering of, yeah. of you know, responding to this whole remote connection that right. we, we have to so, do. So it, Blue Jeans fits in perfectly to our architecture and to our strategy. Um, we look like the smartest um, folks in the room when we close that transaction, you know, right at the inception of the pandemic. Uh, it wasn't time to be that. We didn't just run around the marketplace and find a, you know, uh, you don't do those types of deals at this level in a month. I hope, I think right. everybody understands that. Uh, but we had, we had found the right partner and we had partnered with them and we were actually selling their product. This happens pretty frequently because the products we sell that are not ours, we vet out and we typically mm -hmm. use some of those first uh, and then we kind of bring them in house and, and, uh, and sell them, uh, uh, kind of represent them to, into our product portfolio. But Blue Jeans was an architectural fit. They had the highest security, it was the highest quality. And with their API integration, Dave, it doesn't matter what CRM you have uh, or what calendar you use, uh, and all the big ones are out there. Uh, it's a seamless experience and it really met our per user per month model to simplify it. No hardware, no software, no long term. It's just the way that people, uh, businesses, uh, want to interact. So they had the right um, product, plus they had the right leadership team. So from an executive alignment perspective, shared values, understanding the business, philosophy, I mean, it was really a, a unique interlock 
of talent. And, we, and we've been <clears throat> super thankful uh, to them, uh, the Blue Jeans team, and how they've really helped integrate and done well. And you mm-hmm. come from a small company, you, you come into Verizon, it's a little different experience for them. Uh, but they've done really, really well. And the product has been extremely well received with our customers. I can't, I can't say that enough. Um, there's lower cost, free options out there. But if you're going to run a business grade, secure environment in a cloud with all the features you need, uh, you're, you're recording this call on that platform, et cetera, mm-hmm. smart meetings, AI, ML, there's a whole host of things. Uh, this is a carrier grade product that we use, that we are now uh, own and offer to our customers at an incredibly low, low price. Terrific. So is, is the, yeah, you know, I often say that the best product development goes on on the front line of sales. Um, and so that's where you are. Sure. Is, are the demands that small business are going to have as they recover and as they try to get to the future, um, are those demands on you becoming clear? Do you, is, is, are you getting informed on what you need to do, what you need to offer to small businesses? Yeah, I, I think yeah, I would. I would absolutely say yes. Um, I'm thankful for the feedback from the front line from our customers. Mm-hmm. And when you own the platform, such as OneTalk or Blue Jeans or Connect, you, and you own product development, it's in house. You can make those changes. One of the tactical changes we saw the need during this pandemic was something as simple as like advanced call queuing and IVRing on our on our OneTalk platform. They might say, well, we're 25 or 50 people in a, in a call queue. Well, most people don't, but as they're sizing up for the holidays, they may not be able to add more heads. Those, those, right. uh, those head count may need to be more efficient. Or, you know, when I talked about the contact center uh, uh, capabilities, what if you could just hit one and we'll call you back at our first available spot as opposed to waiting on hold? I mean, that, that's an that's a airline feature that we can offer to a uh, shop down the street right now. And that that would that didn't exist, Dave, pre pre pandemic, because right, it wasn't right. need. They would just go to the store. Well, if you can't go to the store, or there's a finite amount of people in the store, or you prefer to shop online or over the phone, whatever it is, you have to adjust. So we're seeing those come in, and we're responding very very quickly uh, to that need, and and really gearing up for this quarter, because I think this quarter, uh, Q4, matters to to everybody. Uh, more than the mm-hmm. other preceding two, because we are starting to, to see a little bit of incremental improvement uh, and sustained improvement. But, uh, you know, a lot of the um, small businesses who are indexed to consumer or retail or B2B to C, this is the quarter. This is where, you know, Black Friday yeah. for a reason, right? That's right? Yeah, it's got to happen. I mean, I think I heard the statistic that that um, 60 or 65% of small business um the, the the revenue happens between Thanksgiving and Christmas. I'm, I'm certain that's true of the re- of retail, um, and it's probably a big piece sure. of driving it. But you know, it's it's a it's a huge portion. They got to get it right. Um, we talked offline a bit about Eric Eric uh, Groves and Alignable and their uh, weekly survey and monthly summary. And the good news is is that a lot of small businesses are optimist optimistic that they're going to have a good holiday season. Um, if, if there's bad news, it's that they're concerned about their expenses and that, you know, will, will they, they, they pretty certain they're going to have a decrease in revenue versus last year, but they're also feeling pretty good about, it's not going to be that bad. And now it's just a matter of, can they manage their expenses through, through the other side? You hit upon upon something real quickly before you go into expenses. Um, what you described and and what uh, the partners you have within the Institute have articulated, we see on our side. Matter of fact, one of our surveys showed that 72% of small businesses are optimistic uh, mm-hmm. heading into this quarter. And mm-hmm. I think I have talked with them and, and knowing this segment pretty well, it's not the need to, to get back to where we were. It's the consistency month over month so I know what the revenue is so I can adjust my expenses to the degree I can um, accordingly, right? Uh, or right. the products may have shifted or my consumer uh, may have, you know, how they're reaching me may have changed, but there's a baseline consistency that in Q2, when the pandemic hit, the baseline was zero, right? <laughs> right? right. So as every month we've gone up from there, um, it's it's improved for most businesses. You think you've got the cohorts mm-hmm. a third, a third, a third lined out, but by mm-hmm. and large, we're, we're seeing that. So I'm sorry, you were going to say something. In, in no, no, I, I, that's a, that's a, I hadn't heard that observation before that, you know, the real that, that, that what really small businesses are asking for is predictability and consistency. 
Right. Um, you know, something that <laughs> obviously got blown out from under them uh, right. back in, you know, March. But um, I, I think that maybe is a, a certain degree of, of reason for optimism on their part, is that things at least are stabilizing. And it's, and you know, you've been in sales. It's a heck of a lot easier to plan to stability than plan to chaos. And right. um, so, um, you know, I, I, I don't know if this is asking you to be too pre presumptuous, but um, are there, are there, well, let me ask this, let me ask it this way. Are there things that you look at now um, as what, how you operated and what you did um, with all the best intentions, in fact, and, and a lot of forethought uh, before the pandemic hit that you look at now and go, wow, that was really, that's not going to work any longer. And, and conversely, are there things that you were doing before that you look at now and go, wow, that was exactly, that is now more than ever what we should be doing? From a Verizon perspective or a customer perspective? You know, I, you can you can answer it both ways, but I mean, I think that, that you're head of, of a very large sales organization and you guys, uh, I mean, everyone in sales is constantly adjusting their script, right? And their pitch. Um, and 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 doing it sub substantively, and I think that the, the the question that I think a lot of people would appreciate the answer to is, if as you lead this group, what are you saying? You know, guys, we used to do it this way, but we're not going to do it that way any longer because it really doesn't work anymore. Yeah. But there are things that were part of heart and soul of what we were doing before, or a key component that yeah. we need to double down on that. We right. really need to to do more of that. Does that so, make sense? Yeah, no, it makes perfect sense. And we have a, a saying, I think Tammy Irwin coined this. Uh, uh, she's the leader of the Verizon Business Group, the CEO of our, mm -hmm. of our unit. Uh, we're not going back to work. We're going forward. <laughs> that's a great, that's that's a great way of putting it. It is because uh, and the way I like to think about it is there are things that we did in the past we will no longer do. Okay, yeah. uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, there are things that we did in the past that, that we continue to do because it's a good sound business practice and there are mm -hmm. good things we'll, we'll take forward from there uh, but then there's things we're doing now that we would never have even tried uh, because it wouldn't been in in our scope to do so or the belief system at the time would have prevented us from from changing it if you are the number one brand or market share in your, in your industry and you've got a decade of success and you're building upon it why would you change your business process and, and it's a, until you're interrupted? And you interrupt to get you get interrupted mm -hmm. by uh, competitors, by technology cycle, by external influences. Well, this was the biggest external influence ever uh, in, in my lifetime, mm -hmm. uh, and and it's, uh, I think I think that's universally true. So one of the examples is in a in a sales business rhythm, and I'll I'll ask any uh, sales leader to, uh, who's had you know a geographic responsibility. There's a business rhythm. You're in the office Monday morning. You're, you're doing yeah. your daily tests, right? We're around the water cooler and how's your weekend and things of that nature, right? Uh, and you're in the office between a, uh, X and Y and you go to the field, you come back and there's this, there's this regimentation uh, of command and control that is associated with it. That's all done. We're never going to go back there. Okay. Right. Uh, right. I, I won't allow it. <laughs> it's inefficient. Mm -hmm. No. Right. It's it is. A good experience. It's not a good customer experience. It's not good for the environment. Right? And therefore, it's not good for our shareholders. So I don't, mm -hmm. I don't see that. Mm -hmm. Now, do I want to collaborate with people and see people I'm not related to? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> right? Absolutely, with certainty. I can't wait for that day. We're gonna have a big get together. <laughs> be awesome. Uh, but, but not for the purposes of doing things or tasks, I should say, that can be done this way, more efficiently, yep. more expediently. Yep. Right. Yes, we're going to have some uh, go back to the office. Yes, we're going to have a hybrid in that environment. But what's the optimal business practice? This has shown us that we can run a business virtually and digitally. Right. We know how to do this, and we now have the tools set up, so it's a right. it is work from from anywhere. So that's that's from a you know um, a, a leadership perspective. There are mm -hmm. tactical things that we used to do, uh, and that I see our, our customers not doing. Here's a great one: uh, most companies, believe it or not, Dave, have not made the full shift to digital. Hey, we right. use carbon copies for our bill of ladings, for our invoicing. You think about that? Like sign yeah. this, uh, carbon copy, pink copy here, yellow right. copy there. Like People that. don't want to touch it. They don't want to touch exactly. that stuff and anymore. You're drive, and you're going to drive the truck or the uh, back to the office. Well, no one's there to collect it. So, so you have yeah. to think about that whole, that whole thing. That, that's how 
uh, uh, American business get paid has changed. So you yeah. put that on a tablet, you put a digital form on there, you make it secure, you swipe it, you're done. You could you could you could take a, a QR code uh, and and scan it in and get your payment. You don't have to touch anything. So kind of right. touchless retail we've we've deployed in our stores at Verizon. I think it's a, mm -hmm. it's a genius move on how you can do that. But when I think about touchless business processes, both right. figuratively and literally, literally people right. shouldn't go right. But as we go forward and you can but should you? Should you have a carbon copy in 2021? I don't think so, right. man. I, think that, I don't think so. Stuff. Let's sunset yeah. that. Let's, let's move forward. Yeah, I mean, I, I, one of my, you know, when, when I first confronted a barcode that I could scan to see a restaurant's menu, yes. I was like, shazam, this is great. I mean, awesome. I'd much rather scan it on my phone. Than, but you can you know, also, in that, in that, okay, so it's, it's a convenience factor, but now, um, if you want to know what the caloric composition is of that meal, yeah. if you want to, if you're an aficionado and it's a gastro, all the you data you can where, load into that. Exactly. So it's actually better uh, than, right. than what it was previously. So that's a new business that really didn't exist. It was a novelty. Now it's not a novelty mm -hmm. anymore, right? That's a, it's a right. business that, that is emerging from this environment. And there's many others like that. Um, curbside takeaway, the technology to, to mm -hmm. let you know when a license plate is there. Right, uh, the ability to pay remote. I mean, you name it, all of those asset mm -hmm. tracking. Why do you send someone around to check an asset? We can tell you exactly where it is on a dot on a map for a dollar a month. I mean, that's the type yep. of innovation that, uh, that, that in the past, well, Tom did that. Now, from a customer perspective, I talk about shift to digital, shift to cloud. I got to tell you, there's still a lot of servers sitting in closets on customer premises. And what right. this pandemic has exposed is your IT person down the street probably really great at what they used to do. Um, there's no way they can compete against cloud-based technology and virtualized services. I'll give you a great example. Mm -hmm. That 10 person office. <clears throat> you had a copier person. Copier mm -hmm. broke, you called the person, you had a maintenance contract, right? What mm -hmm. happens now, Dave? You have 10 copiers. Who's gonna troubleshoot that? You got 10 right. firewalls. You're not, you physically can't set, so you have to virtually offer that. That's a new service we introduced just a few months ago called Tech Team. Stand, mm -hmm. Stacks on top of your, uh, of your um, uh, total mobile uh, protection. So it covers all mm -hmm. your devices, bro you know, broken, lost, think like insurance, but more. Uh, mm -hmm. But the Tech Team is really something I'm starting to see customers pique their interest. And it, I, it's the next thing to, to break through. It's virtualized cloud-based 24 by seven for your employees who are not in the office. And that it yeah. makes them sure it's secure. That's the next wave of going digital and making sure that your end users can access blue jeans, can get their calendar integrated, that don't have viruses on their computers. And it's basically a managed service, if you will, right, uh, for the right. small business. This is all really exciting. And it does, I think it leaves me, you know, more bullish than ever that small businesses will have the partnership from from those of those of you building products and services for small business because i i've heard it over and over again in the interviews that i've been doing the last couple of weeks for for this conference and and i think that that it it really i hope everybody gets a chance to see everybody else's presentation because it will yeah. it will definitely lend you confidence when you hear from ship station and you hear from um from pitney bows when you hear from all these different players who are coming at things from all sorts of different angles but they're all kind of on the same mission to help small businesses transform. So kudos to you guys. And congrats, by the way, on, you know, double nomination this year for brand of the year um, and our best of SMB awards and, and hall of fame. So congrats on that and uh, well-deserved, well-earned, you know, you were nominated by 35 of your peers uh, in right. the business to small business space. So, um, uh, and, and your judges are, uh, a dozen influencers who speak to literally millions of small businesses a month, and um, I'm, I'm excited to see what they come up with as as uh, finalists and winners. This yeah, Thursday. as an idea, this, this has been day. this. Is, thank you for that, and um, to be nominated and be part of the cohort in general is is special. And yeah. I'll tell you, um, I think back on my time at Verizon. I've been here almost 16 years. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until we really got focused on the small businesses segment unto itself, not part of a bigger segment that we really right. unlocked. That, I mean, from the point we, you and I started talking about small businesses and how Verizon uh, services them and how we approach mm -hmm. the marketplace. So now 
you've seen the the product evolution roadmap. Tremendous uh, transformation on your own part, right? Yeah, a just just tremendous velocity on the product development side, feedback loops and uh, inputs from our customers. And if I if I were to distill it all down, what do you, people say, what do you say? It's simplification. We can provide, and we do yeah. provide everything you need. Okay, mm -hmm. through one partner. If we don't sell it, we'll at least recommend it. But through mm -hmm. one partner, so you can focus on your business. And small business shouldn't get 15 invoices from technology companies. It's inefficient, mm -hmm. and you'll never mm -hmm. get the best deal because you don't know what you don't know. Uh, so if you have a partner that provides the base layer that you have to have, that's network, and it's security, and it's mm -hmm. applications, that's our lens. That's how we're building it. So there's more to come. Uh, I'll make sure I keep you in uh, uh, up to speed as, uh, as yeah, we roll absolutely. the next wave of uh, innovation in the marketplace. I will tell you, though, um, we are thrilled at the nationwide 5G network. The customer uh, response has been electric uh, to, mm -hmm. in fact, we did it right. We didn't put a sticker on an old network and call it something else. We just stick to our values, uh, uh, position and sell with integrity and, and make sure that we, we follow through on, on everything we say we're gonna do. That's that's why we, um, we are who we are, so. It's always a pleasure, man. It's always informative. I always walk away. Um, combination of inspired and, and, and odd at the same time. So thank you so much for doing this. I really appreciate it. Well, Dave, thank you for having me. It was awesome. I look forward to talking to you soon. All righty. Take care, bud. All right.